So you want to grow tree collards. That is awesome. I'm so happy about that. I love tree collards. I've been doing Project Tree Collard for eight years, so I'm pretty enthusiastic about them. But it can be a little confusing in the beginning because you don't know, should I buy a rooted plant? Should I get some cuttings or maybe seeds? I don't know what to do. So I'm hoping this will encourage you to start them from seeds. And here is why. When you get a big blue tree collard from me, and that's in the background there, it's a clone. It's literally a piece of my mother plants that has roots. And if you're getting cuttings, then they're just the unrooted version of my plants. And they may or may not be adapted to your climate. They're adapted to my climate. And my climate is in the foothills of big mountains in California. I'm at 2,300 feet. We have July and August are like 100 to 115 degrees nonstop. It's very, very hot and dry summers. And it's pretty cool winters and we get a foot to three feet of snow every winter. So unless you have those exact conditions, you're taking a slight risk that the tree collared plants and cuttings and things you get from me are not gonna thrive in your climate. They may do great. I love seeing all the pictures of people's like, this is my Jolly Green, or look at my dinosaur plant. Look at my Merritt tree collard, isn't it beautiful? And they're in, they're in New Hampshire or Connecticut or Texas and it's it really warms my heart to get you know these pictures but also really exciting to me to grow from seed because when you buy seeds and you plant them in your area those seedlings are going to be adapted to your climate your soils and your conditions and I need that same resilience a little bit from you because I've been making YouTube videos for eight years and I haven't monetized yet. And I would like to keep making videos, but I, I need some support. So thumbs up on the video, subscribe to the channel and leave comments and suggestions. Thanks. So if you grow from seed, I encourage people to not use the entire packet of the seeds unless they have a really huge garden. So let's say you do half the seeds. You might end up with 12 or 13 seedlings. There's an excellent germination rate on the seeds. So out of those seedlings in the first year between your crazy hot or humid summers or whatever, or your weird cold snaps or storms and things in the winter, you're going to have the plants that self-select and they just don't do well or die. This is actually good because you want to find the varieties that thrive in your conditions. So of the survivors that have gone through the first year, you might even let go of some of them yourself. You might say, ah, oh, that one's not so tasty or that one always gets hit by bugs. So you might end up with three or four tree collards of the originals that are thriving in your climate. And then in their next year, they may in your climate bud and flower and make seeds and you could save those seeds. And that's when you really get into this land race idea where you are growing seeds from plants that grew in your climate. And so these are going to be more successful for you than if they were grown in another area. So your second generation of seeds are going to be even more adapted to your conditions and even better plants most likely than the ones you got from me. And you could go on doing this for a few rounds every year, saving some of the seeds and planting those out. Sharing those with people in your community because tree collards do make a fair amount of seeds. And you can always take cuttings of the plants that you like. In fact, it's a good idea so that you have those as security in case they get hit by a hurricane or something. So by doing all of this, you are a food revolutionary. You're creating food security for yourself and for your community. And you have then a wealth of knowledge because for several years you've been creating this land race of tree-colored seeds. So 
So I highly encourage people to go on that journey if they have a large enough garden and want to undertake something like that because it is a little bit of a commitment. But I have been doing that with lettuces and radishes and carrots and uh, beans and different, different things in the vegetable garden. So this is not just applicable to tree collards. So I hope this video has helped you understand why you should grow tree collards from seed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.